Ladies and gentlemen, your votes are in. And thanks to you, here is our official review of Metal Gods by Dream Evil. Thank you for your votes. Cast them down. Hey, oh, Metal Nation. This is Podcast Them Down. That was Matt. That's Doug. And I'm Tim. There are some who call me Tim. And this is our official review of the new Dream Evil album, Metal Gods. All right. And since we got so good at this, I already have the spreadsheet up, which we will now fill out. So let's start with artist, Dream Evil album, Metal Gods, 2024 uh, format. I, I got it digitals because I am, I, I have broken my own covenant Oof. and, uh, did not get the CD, so we I can't comment on the CD packaging. Yeah, not they said to host this new contract, you know, whatever. So let's let's keep it. Yeah, I I also see it digital. We'll we'll in the retrospective next yeah. week. We'll uh, I'll have the CD then. I'll go on Amazon and look what the CD looks like. <laughs> uh, I, I, a while back, we reviewed a Hammerfall record too, and I that was so long ago. I hate to Shit. give Metal Archives any credit ever, but I do think the genre of of Dream Evil and Hammerfall in the archives is spot on, which is heavy slash power metal. Heavy I'll agree first with that. Power, yeah, kind of accepty, both of them. Okay, least accept quite getting the ball over the line. Power every song. All right. I think the album's called Metal Gods. It is, in, in fact. Dude, they, so the last time I listened to, to uh, Dream Evil, uh, it must have been evilized. Yeah. Uh, no. It was. Well, no, hang because on. Because I, hold on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow hang down. on. down. The last time I willingly went out of my way to listen to dream evil was evilized because it had the song made of metal which has the line um <laughs> i am oh. so fucking metal and so is my wife and then some lady goes i am his wife and he goes shut up well and, for the uh, record i hey? absolutely made sure you were aware of the lyrics to uh the the song fire battle and metal on the united <laughs> record because metal is used like eight times in one uh, in the chorus. Yeah, so I remember the Book of Heavy Metal, but I think that's about where I like. I was like, eh, I think I'm done with this. But yeah, I like. I have been Dream Evil has been thrown at me, and I saw them live after this. I think I saw them in 2009. I want to say, which was neat because they almost never did shows. Uh, which, it was it was in the UK. And you would never believe that if you watched the bang your head video where they're artificially playing for like a hundred thousand people. <laughs> uh, which begs a point. Uh, Dream Evil kind of early was right in the irony line. Wait, uh, what? I, no. Uh, bang your head. Heard in the morning. Bang. Yeah, uh, and the, the book of have like, and they don't go as far as Glory Hammer and a lot of these 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 kids bands that don't really count as metal, but it has to be acknowledged, and it would be fair to hold that against them, like when they say, "Now it's time for fire battle in metal." I live for the metal, metal screaming and lightning. I cry for the metal and die for the metal. Like they know exactly what they're doing there. And, and you can't, there's no suspension of, uh, of uh, disbelief. Uh, so, yeah, your results may vary with them. But, uh, the, yeah, they produ released Evilized, one before that. The Book of Heavy Metal, I think, was a pretty big hit. Um, there's an amazing thing if you look in like most of their music videos through 2010, whenever the, the bass drum is hit, uh, they'll, They'll do an after effect of the camera shaking. I remember you showing me this, so perhaps I, I've listened to more Dream Evil than I realized and just ignored it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so at least through United was pretty good, and the narrative is the um, especially the last album was kind of weak. I don't think I ever heard it. There's one in 2010, but I 
I saw Dream Evil March 17th, 2012. All right, go on. Okay. So they are Hammerfest with uh, Metal Gods. And Tim, I think they're, they have connections to Hammerfall, like, like yeah, conditions. The, the, uh, the vocalist had done backing vocals for uh, some of Hammerfall songs, and uh, they were created by their producer. By Hammerfall's producer, Frederick. Oh, interesting. All right. Uh, so we open with, uh, we open right with the gang chorus, the battle gods. Uh, <laughs> pretty catchy right out of the gate. Uh, this is a similar song to the Book of Heavy Metal. Um, uh, it hits you real quick. It's about the, the experience of metal and the heroes we worship. Uh, and it is a, a banging opener. Uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. I really like the uh, the solo break. All right, then we I go on. To- described every song on this album, though. Yeah, really. Yeah, like, <laughs> and I think uh, oh, we'll be edgy and controversial a little later on. But okay, uh, okay, all right. Keep in your uh, pants, Tim. Ne- next up, we get uh, "Chosen Force," which is about taking back what's yours. Uh, it's a, another melodic, mid-tempo, punchy song. Uh, do you think there's a lot of rape on this record for a power metal album? And maybe this isn't the first song that I don't like. Uh, but yeah, there's a, uh, like some village was killed. Women and children die. There's cries of pain. Everyone's out of hope and fear no more. We're taking back what's yours. Here you are. We are the chosen force. Do you believe you never stand alone? Cities on fire, dismembered children, crying tears. Jesus, fuck. Yeah, I know. This this Let's is just, up. This is up tempo, bright power metal. It's so happy. Uh, yeah, like, this, that's, 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 something doesn't work. These were <laughs> a death metal band came into Frederick Nordstrom Studios, left their lyrics behind for a song they didn't do, and then they turned it into this. Hey, let's look at this one. <laughs> Uh, well, I yeah, and we'll talk about the uh, the fight in the night music video. I, I think there's an edgy, uh, you know, a, a shit posting edgy quality to a little bit of this because it's like the Hammerfall template, and it's like let's make everything two shades darker, and then you deal with the ramifications of that. <laughs> and that that fuck you is pretty metal, so. <laughs> All right, then we get uh, The Tyrant Dies at Dawn, which is about attacking the enemy and bringing honor to your king. Uh, another good song. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like The Tyrant Dies at Dawn. It's also got, uh, they're, like you said, they're following the Hammerfall formula. It's got, it's got the instantly memorable chorus, and it's also got a whoa, 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 whoa yeah. in, in yeah. the middle of it. <laughs> and uh, I think a few of these songs sound like the seven seals style power uh their primal fear so i can't even describe what i mean but you know pseudo you know, like all, all guitar driven but with the structured like more symphonic music um so yeah then we get lightning strikes uh which is an open threat against your uh a griever uh another another good song i really like the central riff to this song mm-hmm. uh and this is well, we mentioned the Hammerfall formula. I think this riff is more complicated <laughs> than your typical Hammerfall song. But it's so yeah. So it's it's they're, an they're, execution. They're trying to s- just step it up a notch. Yeah, and a lot of the uh, yeah the like the solo breaks are more complicated than they need to be in all these songs. To to the band's credit, uh, then we get uh, "Fight in the Night," um, a common lyrical theme to. Dream Evil is the night, and uh, nearly all of their albums, usually two thirds through, have a song uh, that is in the night. Uh, so, Children of the Night, Fear the Night, uh, Only for the Night. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thematic consistency. And this one is uh, okay. Uh, it's about antagonizing the enemy. Um, it's it's the single when it sounds like book of heavy metal or bang your head like this has dream evil single written all over it and it's fine uh you should have stayed home like your mother told <laughs> i like how it doesn't even rhyme 
because uh, <laughs> it's here, tears, tall, told. Maybe that rhymes in Swedish, but not here. <laughs> so then we get, well, I think that's a, yeah, a interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll save that for a bonus episode. Doug's, uh, Doug's Anglophile, vile Anglophile views that come out when discussing. Can we call the segment Doug's Anglophile? <laughs> All right. Then we get uh, Masters of uh, Arms, which is uh, kind of an open bravado about mastery and uh, unfocused threats. They've just been fighting in the night all night. Mm-hmm. Now he's out in the cold and ready to fight some more. And uh, it does have sort of a, maybe a controversial hard rock aspect to the chorus. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, the song works. Uh, then we get uh, Born in Hell, which is about a, uh, a man or monster who's an unrepentant killer and now, likes I to make things suffer. I didn't hear it, but at least on Apple Music, it has an explicit warning. Did you catch what the swear was? Yeah, no, I didn't. The first lines are killing for no reason, killing just for fun. Well, yeah, but what what warrants what warrants giving you the explicit lyric uh, label these days? Yeah, I I don't see any profanity in the lyrics. I don't remember any uh, like samples or background noise. (laughs) There's a sonata. (laughs) <laughs> there's a sonata the the if you go listen to our sonata arctica review there's a song where he just like he's singing for a while and then it just goes asshole <laughs> yeah see now that what, what? that should get you a, an explicit lyric um that would be something that dream evil might do though um so it's it's fine uh it kind of reminded me and i hope it's not just because in the he- it's a three words ending in the hell but the riff and it's not like a jugulator song a little bit but probably just because of burn in hell wait do you mean jugulator the famous algerian metal band yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, great thrash act uh check out the insect one um <laughs> so then we get insane and now we it's a Kind of about ascribing insanity to someone who hurt you. Uh, so th- it's pretty metal. Uh, it's a little whiny. It's fine. I can't take your lies no more. Yeah. Take, take all your stuff and get out of my house. You scary snake. You slimy cod. Uh, it was supposed to save discussion of the lyrics for the bonus episode. Um, okay, then we get Night Stalker, which uh, is a bit of a left turn it's about uh richard ramirez the 80s serial killer and rapist in los angeles uh it's pretty heavy uh uh i i guess that's metal they do (laughs) recognize the the satanic qualities he claimed if i recall i think that's right uh and it's pretty literal biography um Again, this is just kind of like pointlessly edgy stuff for a power metal record. And it's not even like, like, remember Camelot did that song on the Zodiac Killer for no reason? Yeah, right. Like that. Uh, so the music's good. I don't really like how it fits, though. But it's. Yeah, it's this. It sounds like one of those Iron Maiden, early Iron Maiden songs I don't like. Oh, uh, times. yeah, it's. Yeah, like Harwood did the, the um whatever the yeah. Yeah, like those. It's like uh yeah, it's like someone's concept album demo. Like, hey bros, I was thinking about doing a concept album about various serial killers. And they're like, uh-huh. He's like, listen to this one I read about the Night Stalker. And they're like, uh-huh. And then they're like, guys, the album's only forty one minutes. What do we do? It's like, I guess we can get the Night Stalker song on here. <laughs> All right, so then we end with uh, Y A N A, uh, which we award in the chorus stands for "You Are Nothing at All." It's uh, missing an A. Yeah, Y A N A A. And this, the uh, protagonist of the song, is sort of asserting their self worth and dismissing the influence and value of someone who hurt them twenty years earlier. Uh, so again, very metal. <laughs> uh and, and it is fine uh, uh for a uh slower in song it's fine 
uh, and then 41 minutes, 24 seconds later, we are out. And that's how you do it. <laughs> They're in and out. We're done. We, we whined about someone who heard us repeatedly. Yeah, yeah, there's probably, yeah, this is a pretty whiny interpersonal record. <laughs> Maybe that's why they've, like, front-loaded it with the, the excessively violent uh, sort of medieval and Viking stuff so they could whine. They're like, <laughs> see ya! Uh, honestly, I gotta give it an eight. I think I think this is probably better than that last Hammerfall record, since, since they artificially have to be compared to that. Right. Uh, it, uh, it's more concise, punchy, I like all the, um, I'd say it's a little more contemporary in approach. Um, and I don't always love their stuff. Uh, but if you're a uh, Dream Evil fan and you like to ride the irony line, uh, this is a solid record. Darn solid record. Um, I'm, it, it's, it's the, uh, I'm glad they're getting away from the goofier stuff. And I know that's weird to say about Dream Evil, but um, I, I they took a lot of swings, and I feel like they missed a few times. This isn't something I'd go out of my way to listen to, but there's nothing. There's so much worse out there. So <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to go seven point two on it. Uh, well, as we know, I don't give uh, uh, fractional scores, so I'm gonna have to give this an eight. Um, you know, way back when we reviewed that Hammerfall uh, album, we talked about how they were like default Hammerfall, like good Hammerfall, but nothing memorable. I feel like I'm more compelled, even though this sounds like a Dream Evil album, like I, I feel like I'm more compelled to listen to this. Maybe it's just because they haven't put out an album in a while. Um, but the, there just seems to be more genuine variety between the tracks in a way that's not just like power song power song ballad power song power song ballad power song power song ballad out you know there's it, there's more thought or at least there's a more kind of cohesive collection here and um, there's a what are they going to do next yeah of. yeah you can, you're you're interested yeah. so what number is that uh oh i said 8 el ocho Oh well, I was I was I was getting shit together here. Yeah, you're uh, digging around in your box of records or whatever that was. <laughs> it looked like you were fondling one of these uh, Hammerfall demons' toes, actually. All right, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to hold the claw here. All right, um, presentation. All I got is the artwork. Um, I hate it. <laughs> it's, it's a stupid cover. Again, I don't like it uh, is it stupid intentionally though? Is the uh, none of their? Okay, I think Evilized and maybe the first record had a more traditional kind of metal painting cover, and they've done this photo collage thing on a lot of records, and it's uh, affronting. But is that not metal? No, I, just, no. I think it's just a bad design. All right, so yeah. it's like it's like this mechanical um, bird. It has a bird head. It has like a dinosaur neck. It has two sets of wings for some reason. Uh, there's fire between the wings. Mm. It's got beefy arms. It's got like shredder, like from Teenage Mutant Ninja it Turtles has gauntlets. It's super got, shredder gauntlets. It's got like a bajillion cogs in its leg. Yeah. And then it has like a runner's foot and then like a, a dragon's tail. Wait, when did this come out? Is this a was this a crass Olympic tie-in? It, it's just I it, it's stupid. I don't like looking at it. <laughs> There's nothing uh, redeeming about this cover at all. Isn't the, isn't and then the they plastic. This looks like one of those. Um, I don't know if you've ever had to like go look for uh, some cheap album artwork, but you can go and it's like, oh, I ha uh, you can get discounted photo uh, discounted album covers from poor artists. Like poor meaning like unskilled artists who's like, oh you you can you can have all the rights to this cover for only a hundred euros, and I feel like they just got one of those, um, and threw their uh, logo on it because the the logo kind of doesn't belong there either. Yeah, and then threw metal gods at the bottom in 
they searched for gothic font and then found that like this this cover sucks i think they're going for a, like a dime store mechanized egyptian vibe i i just i i know what they're trying it just it, it's too it's just too much it, it's they're an established band if there was this if this was their first album and it was 1999 i would give them a little more benefit of doubt but i cannot I, I agree with Tim. It's it's both too much and not enough. Um, it there, there's just not the it's if the fire wasn't there, Doug, I I might be willing to listen to you. But this is just bad Photoshop fire. I uh, yeah, I'm like that past that the like Oculus thing in the background is clearly like a silo or like it's clearly that's fine. I. Had, uh, this would work. This would be acceptable in 2002 at a CD insert. But I agree. If you if you bought a vinyl and it came with this, you would not be happy. I'm Unless happy. Unless it's a, it's a five. It's a two for me. Uh, I, I five two. I'll split the difference. It's a three uh, point five. But it's it's under protest. <laughs> All right. Trueness slash metal. It's too try hard. I encourage you both to look at Dream Evil's picture on Metal Archives before providing an answer. Hang on. Okay. okay. All right, I got it. What the fuck am I looking at? Okay, well, okay, that's gonna well. that's gonna cost them. I'm gonna go down to a, a, a six point five on the trueness slash metalness. Uh, I don't know what I, Doug Tim's browser must be broken. That's a ten. Uh, uh, how can you? Uh, s- Satan, or at least Satan's audio engineer, is a member of their band. Um, so, all right. Well, dude in the center has been crying and is running his makeup. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's because they only have one pair of sunglasses, and the guy on the end took them. Uh, no, I think he got those from his girlfriend. <laughs> well, they look more like uh, blinders, or uh, you know, like a uh, yeah, uh, and the way he's holding his coat. Like there's just a lot of edgy, ambiguous stuff that is both affronting and brilliant. I I'm gonna have to go with an eight, but I I could I could see going as slow as a two and as high as an eleven. So, wow. Um. Uh. Yeah. Uh. It's a ten. It's it can't, just Tim. A, as it much a- as <laughs> as much as you hate the crying guys, uh, like look at his chest just puffed out, and then look at the guy. Uh, the long, the the only guy who maintained his long hair, uh, besides the the guy in the Jackie O glasses. But um, look, just look at his frowny ass face. Like you're telling me that's not amazing. Yeah. yeah okay. You, you, all these points, I did miss these details, uh-huh. and it just reinforces how try hard they are. I'm gonna go down to a four. Would a try hard band have a yes. guy with a brown? leather jacket with like the quilting on the shoulder right he didn't even get the right jacket 3.5 look at the servo tattoo hand yeah the servo what's, what's ta- not all about that it's going down to a three the more details you point out the lower the score is gonna go they all tried for the handlebar mustache but none of them succeeded okay i'll give them half a point for that because that's <laughs> Fa- failure could be metal. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, there we have it. Let's see where this sits. Uh, for my knowledge, yeah, I, th- I think that's about right, actually, <laughs> in, in the grand scheme of things. We'll find out when we do our year in review. I cannot so. wait for the year in review. See you next All time right. for the 2028 year in review. If you're in the Patreon, stay tuned for the, uh, the, the Tim and Matt watch the... Uh, uh, fight in the night react fight, video. Fight in the video. night. That's yes. Right. Yeah. Fight in the All night. All right. Until next time, Metal Nation. Just down. More like metal frauds, am I right?